Okay, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Colin. This is Kurt. Uh, we're just sitting in this cafe waiting for a caravan that is bringing Meritui Patricio, the female indigenous candidate for the presidency of Mexico. The caravan will arrive just outside the cafe here and then they will march into the city center to the Zocalo uh, for a rally and mass, mass meeting. So Kurt, can you tell us a little bit about the significance of this uh, in terms of Mexican politics uh, over you know, the last several decades, if not the last 150 years. Sure. This is a very symbolic uh, moment uh, in Mexican politics, uh, in the sense that if you think back to the 19th century, and Mexico's iconic uh, President Benito Juarez was a Zapotec Indian uh, up here from Guelatao in the Sierra Norte of Oaxaca. There hasn't been any indigenous uh, presence in, uh, in presidential politics since. We're talking about 150 years. And Mary Chile is an indigenous woman, a uh, Nahuatl speaker, and uh, traditional uh, doctor. Now, this has uh, been possible because Mexico changed its electoral law for this cycle, allowing independent candidates uh, for the first time to run for the presidency. Before, they always had to have a party backing. On one hand, this is great. It's an opening of the system. On the other hand, you can say, well, it's an opening for wealthy candidates to run who can finance their own campaigns and who can collect the signatures necessary. The signature requirement to get on the ballot is very stiff. You need to get 1% of the entire uh, national electoral roll, or about 850,000 signatures, spread over half the states in the country, or 17 states, which is prohibitively difficult if you don't have a lot of money going in or, you know, years built uh, making an organization. And it's very unlikely that Marichui is going to get those, uh, get those signatures. They're about 650,000 or so down. But the symbolic nature of this cannot be ignored. Here we have, uh, as I said, an indigenous um, woman traditional doctor who sees Mexico through that lens, a lens of Mexico suffering from a cancer. And the cancer, according to, you know, she's the spokesman of the National Indigenous Congress, the cancer is capitalism, the cancer is a system imposed from above, the cancer is one of environmental degradation with regards to mining, with regards to oil exploitation, with regards to cutting down the jungle, and so many other things, these large infrastructure projects that wind up squashing the poorer parts of the communities of the country. A few Canadian mining companies, for example. Yeah, just a few, <laughs> just a few. <laughs> Small controversy there. Um, so, you know, the goal of Mari Chui as the spokesperson for the National Indigenous Congress with Zapatista backing is not to win the presidency. The goal of Mari Chui is to uh, bring in a vision of a totally new kind of politics, you know, a whole different paradigm, not the paradigm we're in now, but a paradigm of communal politics uh, from below where decisions are made based on consensus and based on everyone having a voice, which is how indigenous communities do their decision making through usos y costumbres, the closest equivalent we have in English would be kind of a town meeting, uh, where, where decisions are made uh, communally and in the interest not only of people but of uh, the environment. So uh, this is where we're at now, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see exactly uh, how this uh, meeting takes place in the Zoko. Okay, let's go to the rally. <laughs> We are changing the constitution in order to be able to sell off the country uh, to whoever may fill their pockets. So um, many of these uh, projects that are being now permitted through the new laws are many mining concessions uh, that have been um, given for all of the country, but for a very important part of the uh, territory of Oaxaca. And this without even asking uh, whether the indigenous communities which will be affected are uh, agree with this. Um, because uh, something like 50% of the land in Oaxaca belongs to Indian towns. and. Um, they are simply uh, going to be stripped of their land, uh, their land is going to be poisoned, their water is going to be poisoned, their forests are going to be destroyed, and um, the mining companies will leave once they have emptied the, the earth's belly, and uh, they'll just leave 
death and destruction behind. So this is uh, why the campaign Marichui says we are fighting for life. When they came, the CNI, the Congreso Nacional Indígena, came like four months ago, I asked them a question. And I, I asked them, for you, who is indigenous people? Because I'm from Mexico, I'm blonde. Yeah. And many people say, but why are you in the movement if you're not? And for them, the most important thing is the autoascripción. And that is that if you say that you are indigenous and you are from Mexico, you are indigenous from uh -huh. them. So autoscripción would be self-adherence or self-identification or self-inscription. Exactly. Yeah. And for me, uh -huh. it's important to recognize the cultures and that I'm part of the cultures even though I'm not, I'm blonde, no? And yeah. I don't live in an indigenous community. Right. But I live in the city, I live in the town, and I worry about what's going to happen in the future with my kids, no? yeah. with the society. Solucionar como no ha solucionado los problemas por años en las comunidades. 